Air Jordan 1 Off-White is one of the most interesting collaborations in recent memory. From the way it looks to the guy who designed it, this shoe has brought up so many questions and not enough answers. Well, today I'm here to provide some of those answers and take a deeper look into the shoe philosophy of the Air Jordan 1 Off-White. Now, to understand why the Air Jordan 1 Off-White looks the way it does, we first have to understand the man behind the shoe, and that is Virgil Abloh. Virgil was born on the 30th of September 1980 in Chicago, Illinois. He is a highly praised fashion designer and entrepreneur. He created headlines on social media when the French fashion brand Louis Vuitton hired him as their artistic director for their menswear clothing line. At the same time, he also serves as the CEO of the fashion brand Off-White, which he also created and which is adored and praised by high beasts all around the world. When people look at Off-White, they usually fall into two, two camps. The first one being the typical high beast that sees Off-White as a brand which can do no wrong. And then you have the other camp that consists of skeptics that scratches their heads over why anyone in their right mind would pay almost $300 for a t-shirt that looks half finished. Well, to understand why Off-White looks the way it does, we have to look at Virgil's design philosophy. Every designer has their own way of thinking. This is what separates them from each other. The human mind's creative process is truly a personal and fascinating thing and the result it creates can really disturb the peace in some people. And in Virgil's case, his mind is no exception. In the fall of 2017, Virgil gave a lecture at Harvard's Graduate School of Design. In this lecture, he explained his own personal rule set for when designing clothes for off-white, something that he likes to call his personal design language, which is more or less translates to his design philosophy. Now, I will not go into detail about how each rule applies to the Air Jordan 1 Off-White, but rather highlight three main rules that I think is predominantly present when you look at the shoe. And if you want to see the whole lecture, I'll make sure to link it somewhere in the video. Now, the three rules I want to dwell into is rule number one, the ready-made, rule number three, the free percent, and rule number five, signs of work in progress. Rule number one, which is the most important in my opinion, is called ready-made. New ideas based on recognizable parts, human emotion, and irony. In the lecture, Virgil talks about that one of the things that he doesn't do is creating something from scratch. Now, this is a big criticism that he has gotten from people on social media, claiming that all Virgil does is taking a shirt, adding a name to it, maybe a number or some stripes, and then sells it for 10 times the price that he bought it for. Now, this is predominantly evident in most of Virgil's clothing from his former brand Pyrex, which consists of shirts, shorts, and hoodies with the name Pyrex and the number 23 printed on the clothes themselves. This approach to design has been called out as being lazy since most people see a designer who is a someone who creates rather than alters. But this idea of altering and changing articles of clothing culminates into the first rule in Virgil's design philosophy, which is to create a new idea based on recognizable parts, which translates to, instead of me creating something new, I take something that is already there and build upon it. But how well does this rule translate into the off-white one? Well, the Air Jordan 1 Chicago is one of the most beloved colorways of the silhouette. It is right up there alongside the bread, the royal and the shadow. And Virgil did want to create the next Air Jordan 1 Chicago, he wanted to create his own version of it, hence the new idea based on recognizable parts. And how about the human emotion? Well, the Chicago 1 holds a lot of sentimental value to many sneakerheads. It is one of the good old classics and represents a city that many people call their home, not to mention that Virgil is from Chicago, so I can imagine that the shoe itself holds a lot of meaning to him personally. And it is this base that he wants to build upon rather than try to recreate, and through that ultimately pay tribute to the shoe itself, which I think is where the irony parts come in. Virgil wants to create something new, but he doesn't want to create something from scratch. His third rule, which is named the 3% rule, may sound strange, but what it boils down to is that Virgil limits himself to only edit about 3% in total. 
Now, this again may sound lazy at first, but bear in mind that Virgil's name carries weight and he is working with Nike, which means that he has access to Nike's resources. I mean, he could easily make a whole new shoe from scratch if that's what he wanted to, and yet he chooses the Chicago one and even puts limits on himself to what he can actually add to the shoe, and in this case he even strips things away. The Air Jordan 1 Off-White is stripped down and deconstructed to the point where it looks like a sample of the earliest concept art for the Chicago 1. I mean, the flimsy upper, the Off-White branding printed on the sides with that industrial looking font, alongside the amateur looking suing of the swoosh, and even the placing of the Nike Air branding all adds to this raw look of the Chicago 1. Virgil doesn't go overboard with this design, even though he most likely could. His gift lies in the attention to detail and his creative way of altering and modifying something that is already great. And it's actually impressive that despite this 3% rule, he actually ends up creating a version of the Chicago one that looks like a completely new shoe. The next rule is the fifth rule, the science of work in progress. Now, Virgil explains this as his way of keeping a human aspect alive in the different projects that he is a part of. He does this by making his stuff look like something that is only half finished, and some people may ask, why? Well, why, why would you do that? I mean, wh wh what are you doing, Virgil, bro? What? But you gotta understand that in the world of fashion and design, many try to be a perfectionist. They want to eradicate every single thing that is wrong with their vision and they want to create that perfect piece of clothing. I mean, you even see this kind of trend in the world of today where people on social media want to portray themselves as being perfect. But the truth is that no such thing exists and Virgil knows this. He sees flaws as a fundamental aspect of what it means to be human and he incorporates this school of thought into the off-white one because, let's be honest, it looks unfinished. It looks like a work in progress. It looks like something that is not yet fully developed and is still being worked on. Just like a human being. And just like the flaws that makes this shoe unique, maybe this is Virgil's way of telling us that our flaws makes us unique. Now, I'm not sure if that's the point of the Air Jordan 1 Off-White, but I think you get what I'm trying to say. Now, I understand that my way of seeing Virgil is personal and it is therefore subjective and my interpretation of Virgil's philosophy may be completely different from yours. And you know what? That is okay. I see the Air Jordan 1 Off-White as one of the most unique looking Jordans that Nike has put out there. And it is easily one of the best looking Jordan 1s ever. Now, it's just unfortunate that this wonderful shoe costs an average of around $2,000. Because if it didn't, I will be snatching myself two pairs right away. Anyway, that's all I have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked it, please leave a like and also leave a comment if you agree with my take on Virgil's way of thinking. And if you think I'm wrong, let me know your interpretation and also subscribe if you want to see more. I'm Sneakerclef and I'll see you in the next video.